Dear colleagues, this is a hypermature morganian cataract. Let us see how the surgery proceeds. This is the main incision. It's a 2.8 millimeter incision. See that I am supporting the eyeball with a cotton tipped Johnson bud and I am not using any fixation forceps. Thus, I avoid subconjunctival hemorrhage. This is a white cataract and I am going to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye. I have injected an air bubble. Now, here goes the dye underneath the air bubble. And after few seconds, about 6-7 seconds, the dye is washed out. I am using a Simcoe cannula and BSS to wash the dye out of the anterior chamber. Now here is a viscoelastic substance. This is HPMC, that is hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now, since I have made only one side port in this case, I am introducing the 26 gauge bent needle through the main incision. Here it is. I incise the capsule, raise the capsular flap. And now I use a uterata forceps. I hold the forceps and see what happens. As I go near 9 o'clock, milky fluid comes out. So the cortex has liquefied and has turned into a milky material. That's why this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. I have been able to do an adequate size trixis at on go in this case. And now is the time to introduce the tip of the FECO handpiece. And now what I do is I remove the air bubbles for better visibility. And I remove some superficial cortical lens matter. In this case it has degenerated into milky material. And now I'm going to do direct chop. I'm going to attempt direct chop. But we can see that this is a hard cataract, brownish. And in this case, there's a thick, leathery posterior plate. And the fragments didn't become free. And the fragments remain joined by the leathery posterior plate. I mean the apex or the apices of these triangular fragments were joined by a leathery posterior plate. However, I could crack the nucleus to some distance and I'm going to emulsify the peripheral portion of these triangular fragments and leaving the apices which is joined to the leathery plate at the posterior pole. So you can do this. You just trim each triangular fragment, the equatorial part of each triangular fragment and let the apices be there. And at the end, you tilt the leathery plate and heat it up. Here it is. You can see that the leathery plate has been tilted and you can heat up the leathery plate. Be careful because it's a thin plate. You must lift it up. One edge must be towards the anterior chamber. The other edge towards the 
post a capsule and then you apply ultrasonic energy and now i have removed the chopper i can see that the chamber is stable post capsule has gone far behind and i have emulsified the last portion of the leathery plate safely now i inject some amount of spmc and you can see a small nuclear fragment at around three o'clock i must remove remove that first because otherwise it can get lost somewhere under the iris and at on month's follow-up you can see that at six o'clock in the entry chamber angle and now the cortical lens matter is being removed by simco cannula you can see that there are lot of fibrous plaques on the posterior capsule fortunately the central part is clear so i am not bothered about the peripheral plaques if the central portion is clear the patient is going to get very good vision if the macula and fovea is healthy now i inject viscoelastic substance and in this case i am going to implant a hydrophobic acrylic aspheric intraocular lens here is the intraocular lens the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is also guided by the second instrument the chopper in the left hand into the capsular bag the intraocular lens is dialed and the haptics are placed in such a way that i can go into the capsular bag easily because i want to remove the viscoelastic substance from the capsular bag as well as from the anterior chamber After removing a lot of viscoelastic substance by irrigation with the Simco cannula, I use the irrigating probe of bimanual IA to irrigate out the viscoelastic substance. Your colleagues, we must be very meticulous in removing this viscoelastic substance to avoid post of rise of intraocular pressure if you have done a nice surgery but if the intraocular pressure is raised the patient will have stemi corneal edema will have pain and you will not feel happy now the side ports are hydrated these wounds are made watertight and a final wash at higher magnification is given with bss even for camp patients even for free category patients i give this final wash with bss i do the surgery with ring elected but this final wash is given with bss thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in your practice